Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm taking a break from working on vehicles. I'm going to show you how to do a weldless repair on a cracked mountain bike frame. So a little bit about this bike. I've had this bike for probably uh, 13 years. I bought it off eBay, uh, sold like 400 bucks. It's not the best, but it's got aluminum frame. It's got decent uh, name brand components. And uh, you know, I've just grown to like it. So I was pretty bummed at the end of last riding season when I noticed a vertical crack right here in the headset. I'd love to get a new mountain bike, but a real nice one just isn't in the budget right now. So I looked at getting this frame repaired. Now most mountain bike frames are 6,000 series aluminum. And if you were to get this TIG welded, it requires heat treating, which I found out is quite expensive. I'll get into that process later. First thing I want to show you is how I'm going to repair this frame without welding it. The first thing I did was I scraped off the paint at the base of the crack to see exactly the, how far down the crack went. And uh, you can see there was a lot of layers there. I had the clear coat and then there was the silver paint. Under the silver paint there was blue paint and under the blue paint there was primer and then I was down onto bare metal. And after I scraped down to the bare metal I was able to see the crack went to right here. Now, next thing I did was I got a drill bit. This drill bit is the thickness of the metal and I drilled a hole all the way through at the base of the crack. It's aluminum, so it drills through very, very easily. And when, by drilling this crack at the base, it's gonna stop that crack from continuing to, to uh, grow downward. Now that I stopped my crack from continuing to grow, I needed a way to keep this area right here compressed together. Now, ideally, um, I could have gotten some kind of a, a collar, such as this. This is actually from a CV joint. Um, and slid this over it to keep this area tight and compressed. But I didn't have anything in that size. I didn't buy anything online. And plus, that'd be a tight fit. I don't have any kind of a, uh, a press or anything to get that on there. So, uh, I looked into some clamps. Now, there's a lot of different kind of clamps out there. You don't want to mess with something like a hose clamp. That's obviously not gonna hold. I'd say minimum, I would do a T-clamp, but, I'm not an engineer, so I over-engineered, better safe than sorry, and I found this bad boy on eBay for uh, about 10 bucks shipped. This thing weighs, this thing probably weighs a pound. Now, you gotta find the right diameter. So, <clears throat> I have a uh, digital caliper here, and I measured, and I was at, 41 point, eh, 41 point two millimeters. Now I didn't find anything um, online that was that size, so I checked in inches. And when I convert that to inches, it comes out to about one and five eighths inches. And there's all kinds of one and five eighths inches clamps for pipes and whatnot. And that I'm guessing is what this is. So. I have my over-engineered clamp that I'm going to slide on here. I'm actually fitting it for the first time here. There we go, we've got a perfect fit. It sits flush with the top. And then I'm going to uh, put my bearing race back in here. Tighten this down. And I'm watching the gap on that crack get smaller, ever so slightly. Now I'm not gonna clamp this thing down crazy tight, but just tight enough to keep it compressed together a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to put a piece of clear tape over this hole just to keep any uh, dirt or you know water from getting down in there and getting in the bearings. And I'm going to use clear tape so that I can continue to monitor the crack in case it grows. There we go. Now is this safe you ask? Well, I think it is. I feel like there's no way with being drilled out and having this heavy duty clamp on here that, that crack is going to continue to grow. Of course, I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm gonna inspect it uh, before and after I ride, 
And uh, if anything does change, it does get worse, then I'll obviously scrap the frame and uh, get a fresh bike. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because this is a 6000 series aluminum frame, as most mountain bikes are. Uh, some are 7000 series. There's other, other kinds too, other alloys. But uh, a 6000 series mountain bike frame will require heat treating after you take welding. Um, if you do not heat treat the frame, the weld and the area surrounding the weld will become, uh, I read, about 40% weaker due to the extreme heat. And basically when you heat treat a frame, it resets the whole thing and gets it back to uh, the proper strength, which is uh, T6, I believe. I looked into the heat treating process and it wasn't cheap. Um, what the, that requires is you must go into an oven and for about one hour at about 1,050 degrees, somewhere in there. I read different things online, but that's about what I read, and that's Fahrenheit. And um, that basically gets the aluminum to the point where it's going to almost melt. And then it must immediately be quenched into a water glycol mix. Now, that's in like a second. So it must go directly from this 1,050 degree Fahrenheit furnace straight into this solution. So it basically gets dropped right in. And then from there, it needs to be aligned uh, within eight hours of the quenching. And that's because sometimes it can warp when it's in the uh, extreme heat. So after it gets aligned, it needs to sit uh, at room temperature for I think it's like uh, 72 hours or something like that. And then from there, it needs to go into another heat treat cycle of about 350 degrees for a few more hours, like maybe three or four hours more. So I had prices to get that done, and it was about 300 bucks. So, you know, almost the price of the bike. Not worth it. So I'm giving this a try. I'll be the guinea pig. I think it's gonna work. If it fails, um, I'll be the one base planting into the handlebars. But uh, I'll keep you guys updated on how this works out. And uh, hopefully this bike will last me, uh, well, until I'm ready to get a new one, which won't be anytime soon. Take care.